So how many accountants do we have in the room here? Oh, cool. Great stuff. Brilliant. Is that all working? OK, I think you're working. Cool. OK, so uh, I'll, I'll skip through the first couple of slides. Uh, Jamie Novick, come here from CompuCorp. We're an open source uh, digital agency, or digital agency specialised in open source. Um, cutting it all short, we do a lot of Civi stuff. We do a bit of Drupal stuff as well, a little bit with other systems as well, Pento, WordPress, and all the other things. So uh, working with a number of clients, a, lot, a few of whom are here today, so it's great to see them all here. Uh, cool. Uh, right. So uh, I haven't uh, prepared all of this in a huge amount of detail, so we'll see how it all goes. If it gets a bit choppy, I apologize. The other thing is I've stolen some of the uh, slides from uh, Civicon SF. Uh, so oh, I was supposed to mention, should always reference your work. So Guy Icarino from Greenleaf Advancement. So thank you very much to him so that I've borrowed some of his slides uh, to talk about kind of the uh, accounting in Civi. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk through firstly the accounting. Let's go back. Uh, accounting in Civi, which has been there from uh, version 4.3. So we're now up to 4.5, uh, and then I'm going to talk about what's probably going to be in Civi version 4.6, uh, the new advances, which is kind of support for sales tax and all sorts of invoicing as well. Um, so I'll start with the stuff that's already there. You can sort of get it up and using it. Um, you can use Civi without any of this stuff. You don't really have to think about it, but if you are thinking about how Civi is going to interface with your accounts package, uh, then this is some of the stuff that you might want to start getting into, uh, either yourselves or with a consultant to, to help. OK, so understanding accounting in Civi uh, 4.3. So, um, so the first point uh, is around defining uh, what is integration. So what you know, uh, if you think about it, uh, your uh, CRM and accounting package, it's a little bit like a continuum. Uh, and this is how I kind of explain it to people. So down one end of the spectrum, you've got kind of an account, a pure accounts package, which is just going to understand the totals from an accounting perspective. So your revenue total for a particular account or your cost total for a particular account. Um, at the other end, you've got kind of nice, pretty website integration to take payments and CRM and emails and all of that kind of stuff uh, down at this end. And what you'll find is that, okay, uh, accounting packages are now starting to understand a little bit of CRM concepts. So accounts packages, you can generally even put in a person there. So you can, uh, you know, kind of store a few details about that person. Um, you can, uh, you know, maybe put a few notes against them. And then CRMs are starting to understand a little bit more about accounting packages. So they're kind of starting to say, oh, okay, well, that thing that I sold, actually that needs to go into an accounting code. Or that thing that I sold, actually maybe I need to send an invoice about that as well, and we need to track that invoice. So you need to think of the two kind of like a continuum. And what you want to do when you're kind of implementing these systems is to kind of say, OK, where do I want to draw the line in terms of the functionality? On which side do I want to put it? Who's going to be dealing with invoices? And where's that best to put so that which system are we going to log in to look at it? Um, so that, that's kind of the, the, the background for all of it. So we talk about kind of integration. Um, and so, I mean, the, the definition of the integration that we're kind of using. So um, how are you going to get your financial transactions or the, the finance -y type stuff that's happening in Civi um, over uh, into your finance packages or your accounts packages uh, in kind of a controlled way? Um, so we're not necessarily talking about, you know, it doesn't all have to be electronic. It doesn't have to be automated. The two don't have to talk to each other. It's how we're going to get from A to B so the two are on the kind of on the same level. Um, so. From the 4.3 perspective, I think they picked QuickBooks as being kind of the package of kind of main choice. Um, I'll talk to you about what that is, but actually Civi will integrate with pretty much any other accounting package that, that you need. Uh, there's CSV exports, basically, and I'll talk you through kind of that process and how it works. So the first thing, how many people are already using Civi? We've got like a hands up of, OK. So most people, and a couple, how many, sorry, maybe a better question. How many people don't use Civi at all? OK, so I'll try and keep it like English language for some of that stuff. Um, so when you make, uh, I'll dip into the uh, system as well, if my laptop doesn't go crazy on me. So in Civi, uh, we have the concept of a contribution. The contribution is kind of like a, a payment record or a record of payment. And I'll just bring one up. Uh, my laptop's going to be horribly slow. Uh, there we go. Uh, and on the contribution, we have this thing called a financial type. So the financial type is like your way of categorizing this payment. 
Um, payments could be for membership, they could be for events, or it could just be a, a donation. So um, with the financial types, you can just use Civi without having to worry about any of the accounting stuff under it and just kind of uh, filter your uh, donations using this field. You don't have to worry about any of the accounting stuff that's happening underneath it. You can ignore this presentation and just go about your daily lives without having to worry. Um, if, however, you want to do stuff a little bit cleverer and use some of the extra accounting sort of functionality that's in there, then this new stuff came in with version 4.3. So we changed, uh, I mean, a small point, we changed financial, uh, sorry, uh, contribution types to call them financial types instead and then they hooked up a load of other stuff underneath it which does all this accounting kind of processing for you in some other tables um, so that's that's kind of the first thing uh, so come back to my slides hopefully cool um, so we replaced contribution types with financial types like I said um, and we also added this idea of a financial account uh, and a batch output mechanism for control. So we have these financial accounts, so when somebody purchases something, and we'll go through it in a bit more detail in a second, um, that money goes into a financial account based on some rules that we set up. Uh, and then we have this method now of getting the data out so that we can kind of say, okay, well, that went into that financial account. Uh, so let's say a revenue account and the account code was 1,000. Okay, great, so it's gone into that one. We've got 20 quid in there. And now we want to know that that 20 quid's in there and get it out to the accounting system. So we do that in a batch. Okay, uh, so uh, taking these slides, which they were, better alignment of fundraising, income, all categories and transactions, blah, 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 and fitting in with double entry. So yeah, let's get through that. Uh, higher content, <laughs> confidence in your financial reporting. So um, we'll, we'll come to see how these kind of come together. That's fine. Um, okay, so financial types. You've seen the drop-down list. Um, obviously, this is fully customizable, and you can change these. Um, financial types, um, all transactions have to be assigned a financial type. Um, do, 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 you still have to use default financial Okay, so you can either use the out-the-box financial types that kind of Civi gives, or you can customize those to kind of fit against what your uh, income's uh, financial accounts are. Um, jumping on, financial accounts are Civi's representation of your your financial accounts which are in your bookkeeping software. So the idea is that you have a look at your chart of accounts. Uh, hands up who knows what I mean when I say chart of accounts. Does everybody kind of? So your bookkeeping software will have a chart of accounts which is kind of saying, okay, uh, this income goes into this you know, bucket and this income goes into that bucket, this cost goes into this bucket. And that's kind of something which will be specific to your organization. You might have it out of the box, but you, know, you might have tweaked these things because you're kind of trying to say, well, we want to know uh, this kind of income which is from this type of event goes into this bucket so that we can further subdivide you know, kind of the income. So the first thing that you kind of want to do is you want to take a look at your chart of accounts in your accounting system and then you want to map that over to Civi CRM. So map financial accounts to the da, 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 da. So I'm just going to show you where in the system you can do that, if I can do it without. Um, and just click it. Cool. Thanks. Tech support. Um, <coughs> so uh, in Civi CRM, what you'll find under Civi Contribute, uh, if you really want to dive into the details, uh, and this is kind of a, a bit of an implementer session, so uh, you'll find the, firstly, there is the financial types, and this is your list of financial types here. And you can see that we've got some financial types listed. Um, and then you can also go in and you will see, Civi Contribute, you have your financial accounts. Uh, actually, I don't want to do it on this side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Civi comes to out the box with some default financial accounts just to keep everything kind of working, which are kind of sensible for most organizations. They probably won't necessarily map to your accounts package. So one of the first things that you want to do is to do this kind of mapping of your accounts to Civi CRM's account stuff. So you can see here that we have kind of accounts receivable. That has an accounting code, which will relate to the accounting code in your accounts package. Um, uh, and it has an account type. Uh, so for those who are not initiated with accounting, um, there's kind of the, the basic kind of types of account. You have uh, assets, liabilities, income, uh, expenditure, and uh, owner's liability. Um, and it's kind of Civi matches your accounts to those things, and depending on what type of account you're putting in, um, you need to kind of specify that to Civi so it knows what to do with kind of the income and things. Sorry, I 
bridged over a lot of accounting stuff there, but we'll go into it in a bit more detail. So you can set these up here. So if you want to add a financial account or if you want to edit these so that they fit with your accounts package, then that's what you would do here. Cool. Uh, so And what I've done in order to try and make this kind of understandable if anybody comes back to the slides at a later point um, is kind of give them some colors here. Uh, and now we're going to dive into a little bit of accounting just because I know everybody really loves that. Um, so if you just kind of see the accounting, if we take an example um, of somebody purchasing or paying for uh, a membership, but let's take the example where the payment is kind of pending. So they owe you guys money uh, because they bought a membership and you're therefore going to chase that money at a later point. Um, so for the uninitiated, this would be kind of your, if I haven't made a mistake here, and please point it out if I have, um, the accounting entries that you would kind of have in your books for this, which is that you would credit income to some sort of membership account of you know 100 if the membership cost 100. Um, and then you're waiting. So you've got this asset, this receivable, you're waiting for 100 to turn up in your, in your accounts. Um, so basically in Civi, what you need to do is you need to configure it, if I can go back. You need to configure for this membership, this contribution type of membership, these accounts so that it knows uh, which particular number to put it to. So to say, actually, the revenue, I want to go into a particular revenue account. Uh, or the asset, I want it to go into a particular asset account, or the accounts receivable, sorry, in that situation. Um, and you do that on this screen. Here, so if we take a look at, say, membership dues, you can have a look at the accounts that it's linked to, and you can see that the income account that it's going to is, you know, this 44001, the expense account is 5200, blah, 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 blah. So for each of the uh, financial types, you want to make sure that it's linked to the correct accounts that you want it to go into. Is anybody following me at all? Yes. Hands up, yeah? OK, cool. Um, so I mean, just continuing the example, just to show all the accounting. Um, so that goes into your accounts receivable, uh, and that'll be the situation. So you're waiting for, uh, some, you know, for money to come in. Uh, your contribution has a status. Civi, one of the things with Civi, Civi loves a status field. Okay, they're kind of hidden at the bottom, and they're really important. So as kind of like UX decisions, uh, that's one of those that's out there. But um, you just really need to pay attention to the status fields in Civi. So specifically around membership or contributions, they actually do mean quite a lot. Um, so if we've got a contribution that is pending, uh, so if I just put in a new contribution, assuming nothing fails. So I'm just going to for an example. Uh, fine. Membership due. That's not a membership due. This will be a donation. So this is 100. Da, da, da. And if I set this status of pending, and save that down. As soon as I've done that, what's happened in the background is that Civi's put those accounting entries into the accounting entries tables that are kind of sitting at the back there. So we've now got those two accounting entries have kind of been made. So we're sitting there with kind of an accounts receivable. So um, I've gone a little bit off piece with the slides and we'll come back to them in a bit, but it's probably a little bit more sense this way. So the other feature is the accounting batches. So now we've put that transaction into Civi, we now want to reflect that in the accounts package at some point. Um, so it might be that at the end of each month, let's say that you want to get your accounting information out of Civi and you want to kind of put that into your accounts package. Um, what you want to make sure when you do that, obviously, is that you're not double counting. So that you don't want to say, OK, well, hang on a second, I've already exported that transaction and therefore over counting the amount of, uh, you know, whatever the size of the totals that are going to go into the accounts package. So what Civi has is these batches, which means that you put a transaction into the batch and then it's locked into that batch. I've got some slides and we'll, we'll come back to that, but I'll just walk you through. So we set up a new batch. Let's call this new batch. And you don't have to be specific about any of this stuff if you don't want to be. And what you'll see here is that uh, any, uh, any payments that have come in that haven't already been assigned to a batch are available at the bottom of this screen. So you can kind of see here, okay, well, this payment that I just made with unpronounceable name uh, is available for the batch. 
And what I can do is then assign this one to my new batch that I've created here. So I bring this across. So we've got 100 pounds in this, or this one transaction is in there. And we can go, OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the batch. Um, closing the batch uh, will st stops you making any changes to it, obviously. Um, however, you can reopen the batch if you want to at that point. If you've exported a batch, if you close and export it, you can't make any changes to that batch, and that's it. So it's kind of then locked down forever. So I'm just going to close and export this one. He says, and uh, you're able to export to IIF. So IIF is the format of the file for QuickBooks. Alternatively, you can get this out as a CSV, so which is kind of more relevant for all of us guys. So we do that export batch. Uh, it goes to my desktop, and my screen's not. Uh, it's going to cause all sorts of trouble. Um, God damn you. Uh, no, I don't want to do this. Uh, uh, hate Max sometimes. I can't hide the hide the uh, uh, yes. Right click. Two fingers. Two fingers. Yep. Oh, that's not doing. Options? No. Options. Uh, no, this is uh, no, no. Uh, this is on video as well, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. Right-click on some blank space on the dock. On the dock. Yeah. Ah, hang on. Minimize. Uh, turn hiding on. Yes. Amazing. Cool. Right, so we've got here is, is our output. And what you can see here is that we, we've got all the information that we need to kind of take over to our accounts package. So we've got the transaction day, an internal ID just for reference, uh, the debit account, uh, the amount, the debit amount, and then the other side we've got the 100, which is the, you know, the credit or the, uh, the income side of things. Um, so you're able to get that in on a transaction by transaction basis. Um, what we'll now do, which is kind of like the next uh, stage, if I go back to the PowerPoints. How are we doing for time? Okay, it should be faster. Um, so what might then happen is that you receive the payment. So that was pending, maybe it was a check or something like that that they need to send in. You then receive that check and you've cashed it and the money's in the bank. So what you want to do is then you want to complete it. So you'll go back into Civil and you'll update that status field to say that it, the, the payment's now complete. Um, one thing to keep in mind with this, and something I try and tell all the clients, whenever you're in Civi and you have something that's receivable, um, put, make the contribution, put the contribution in, and mark it as pending. Don't not put the contribution in, because not putting the contribution in means that Civi doesn't even know that you're owed that money. So that's kind of Civi's kind of thinking about like how it deals with this kind of money owed thing. And we'll come to that when we talk about invoicing in a little bit. Um, so here you can see that what happens is, uh, receivable, so we take the money out of receivable. This is like an accounting class now as well, isn't it? Um, this is, yeah, credits here uh, and uh, debit there. So uh, we've moved the money out of the accounts receivable and we've got the cash, which is great. Um, so we go back into CV, CV, CV. Uh, and uh, wherever my contribution's gone, yeah. Dr. Ruach, here we go. We go in and view this, uh, or even edit it. Or not. Dun, 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 dun. And we can mark this as completed. Great, save. Cool. So if I now go back to my financial batches, so I go accounting batches, new batch, and we do a new batch, save, batch number two in the date, which is cool. We should see up in the search if everything's again. You see it's popped up again. And this is because now there's a new transaction there. Those new accounting entries that we just saw on the other PowerPoint have now been also processed by Civi. They're sitting there in the accounting table ready for batch move over. So when you do the next batch, it will pick up that change or that movement in the accounts. And so you've got the remove from this account and put it into the other account. And those two entries then can be passed to your accounting system. So I won't go through the, the export and everything, but everybody can kind of see that kind of working. Did that make sense? Is everybody kind of happy with that? Cool. Doing well so far, team. Uh, 
Okay, so that's the basis of it. That's the basis of kind of accounting. You can configure it up with your account. That goes into account, and then when you export it out, it should match up, and you should be able to then import that directly into your accounting system. <coughs> A couple of points. Um, this is maybe an older slide, uh, which is just that if you're upgrading from an earlier version of Civi, uh, it kind of does all of this in the background for you. So your financial, your contribution types, it creates a financial account for them and just pl plops them over because you were probably using f uh, uh, financial, sorry, contribution types as your reference, your markers for what was in your accounts anyway. So it kind of makes that assumption. So if you do do that upgrade, then that's to go through. Another little point is that whenever you create a financial type, sorry, getting the words out, whenever you create a financial type, it automatically creates a financial account for it to go into separately. So you can then play with that afterwards, but it kind of does that by default just so that you have got the segmentation or whatever it may be. Um, cool. Um, yep, so accounting batches, as I just said, so can provide exports. Each transaction uh, may only be exported once, and that's the kind of the key point here, which keeps things in sync. Um, export and IAF, uh, some neat fools, so don't confuse. Yeah, so don't confuse them with batch data entry as well. So there is something else which is batch data entry, and you can do that. Uh, so we just showed that. A closed batch cannot be reopened. Fine. Uh, so just one other point, which is that you'll see in Civi that there is a bookkeeping transactions report as well. So the bookkeeping transactions report, it, you can just run that report and it will tell you the bookkeeping transactions. There's no kind of uh, structure around that to stop you double counting things. So just be aware of that if you're kind of going down that route and using the report. Um, it, you know, it, it could mean that if you use the same transaction twice, then you're going to have it double counted in your, in your system. Okay, cool. Uh, any questions on all of that stuff? Because I have flown through it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so is there any option in financial okay. type to add the part of a project code or something like that? Um, in financial type, well, you can make the label whatever you want it to be. So that's the first point. So, like the, the label for the financial type, do you mean? Um, I kind of see what you're saying, which is like this, but no, it's the answer. You can't actually, you can't attach custom fields to a financial type. Yeah. But if you put the project code as part of the label, then that should be fine. So that would then mean that you're able to categorize things by project. Right, so you yeah. want to, to split it later in, in, in your export. Um, you want to import it. I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's more a case of that what, you know, um, you can use the financial types to subdivide payments. You might want to do something else, which is just on a contribution, have a custom field which allows you to say which project it's from. Because you probably don't necessarily need, do you need the projects by account? <coughs> Sorry, let me ask a different question. If you are you reporting in your accounts package by project? Yes. Right, so then you would have separate financial accounts in your accounts package anyway well, for each project. Well, no, there's another, there's another uh, thing. I think it's department code. It's called department code. So okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, the layout and the financial types yeah. are very specific to free books. Okay. So um, for stage, you need it's actually three fields. Yeah. Your nominal code, your department, and your cost center. Yeah, so you have like three of them. So okay. that would also be reflected in your output file. Okay. So I don't know what, how that would work. We might have to have a little bit more of a chat about it to understand a little bit more. Well, so I, I think yeah. what you could do is say, so you yeah. put your nominal code, department code, and, and whatever else into the label on that field, and then you're going to export it to CSV anyway for the stage. And then you can just split it in. You can split it up in yourself. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. When you create the data, mm -hmm. then do you need to have on your in QuickBooks or in your accounts? Do you need to have your contact all set up? No. So this is the, the way that kind of Civi is dealing with this is that it's kind of saying, look, I'm going to own all the client stuff. Don't worry about that. I'll I'll look after. I'm a CRM. I know all about the people stuff. You just want to know the totals. So I'm going to send you over all the transactions that have happened, and you can keep that up to date. You can do other exports if you do want to get all the client stuff over as well to kind of sync that. My, my oldest daughter wants to know at year end what the debtor, who, who the debtors are. So if I just got a you know, the QuickBooks just says um, you've got outstanding amounts of £5,600. Mm. But you've got that in the CRM because you've got a list of pending contributions. 
So the idea is not to try and replicate and duplicate stuff. So this is what I was saying like about a, co like a continuum, yeah. which is you kind of want to decide where you want this data to sit. So you probably, in that situation, can leave that stuff because it's in the CRM already. You kind of know that. It's got a list. In, in July, can I see in Sibby who the, who the data related to in May? Yes, if you have all the reports from Sibby regarding the contribution, the status of the data, um, by, by any criteria, but if I audit a single source of truth, I'm giving my clients here, you get your yeah, questions you there. Yeah, you don't want to try and put the data in two places is kind of, I think, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so it's kind of like a case of, well, um, you know, Civi will be our version of the truth in terms of, like, the, the sales ledger or whatever it may be. Yeah, and stuff like that. Cool. Uh, anything? Shall I move on to the next? Okay, so next section before we run out of time. Cool. Um, so the super new, exciting -y or more exciting stuff. <coughs> the new bit. Sales taxes and invoices. So, uh, hands up quickly, how many people charge VAT or sales tax on their income? Okay, so that's about half. Okay, cool. Uh, and, well, who has to fire out invoices sometimes? And how many people have to get their accounts package to create invoices in order to send that kind of stuff out at the moment? So, a few of you as well. Okay. So this is the new bit that we've been working on uh, over the past six months uh, with help from uh, the core team, web, web Access, and also from JMA Consulting in Canada. Um, so the first thing that I want to say is it's optional. The, all this stuff that I'm about to show you is completely optional. You can switch it all off. If you want to ignore the rest of this bit of the presentation as well, you can do, and you don't have to use it. Um, so how does it work? Sales taxes. So the first point here is that in the UK we have quite a simplified, uh, from my previous life as a tax guy, uh, quite a simplified tax system for kind of uh, sales taxes. We just have one percentage-based sales tax, which is VAT, and we all know and love it. Um, uh, lots of different places around the world actually they have more complicated scenarios where you might have a regional tax or you might have a levy as well on certain things or it might be slightly different. The way that we've implemented this is to support, because you know, we had the UK clients, was to support kind of the UK cases to begin with and then we'll go from there. Um, the other point is that um, it's not uh, set up in such a way as to know where the person is purchasing uh, not on the slide, but this isn't set up in such a way as to know where the person who's purchasing the item is from, which can impact on the way that you're supposed to do, obviously, your VAT for it. It kind of assumes that the person is UK-based. So if you are international uh, purchasing from the UK, there might be slightly different VAT rules. You might need to look at something else in order to support that. OK, so uh, what are the features here? Uh, it shows the sales tax amount on the event registrations, membership sign-up forms, uh, and any other public facing page where people are able to purchase stuff. Uh, there's a few configurable uh, display options, so you can kind of say hide the VAT amount, show the VAT amount, whatever it may be. Uh, obviously, it processes sales tax uh, based, on the, uh, based on rules that you kind of set up. So if you put in and say this is 20% sales tax on this particular account, uh, then it will process that uh, and support, like I said, for percentage-based taxes so far. Um, so I kind of had the sales tax liability account bit in kind of brackets at the bottom before. Um, so like I said, you don't need to kind of set this stuff up. This is kind of the bit that we've added. Um, so I'm going to do that accounting thing again, uh, and hopefully I've got this correct. Uh, sometimes I get a bit confused, but anyway. Um, so our new payment pending for membership now, uh, we have the sales tax bit, uh, which is a creditor, which is that, is that right? Yeah. Creditor, yeah, creditor, somebody that we owe money to, so that's all fine. Uh, so we have only an income of 100 because that's how much we're going to bring in, but we've charged 20% VAT on top of it, so there's 20 that we owe to the tax man, uh, and actually we're owed 120 now because that's how much the people have to pay with me, pay us for our membership. Is everybody cool with that? Is that kind of okay? Yeah, good. Lots of nods. Okay, so um, how do I want to show you this? Uh, uh, and then, well, I'll continue through the slides and then we'll come back and show it and walk through. Uh, the next section, obviously, when somebody actually pays for the membership, it's the kind of the same transaction that we had before, so you kind of expect to see that kind of stuff. Um, so what I want to firstly show you is how you set this stuff up. 
Um, what you'll see, uh, actually in the old version of Civi, it's one of those oddities, I don't know why it was there, but they had some tax fields. They didn't really do anything, they were for notes purposes. I think somebody probably asked to put them in there and then they, they were there. Um, in the new version, when this comes out, it will, uh, the, the information that you put in there will actually mean something. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to set a sales tax liability account. Um, so you need somewhere which is kind of your VAT creditor. These are the people that we're going to owe money to. This is where this is going to go in. Um, so you set that up as a liability account and then you put your tax information on it. So I'm just going to show you that in a system. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, CW, where's CW? No, one of you. Dun, dun. Bear with me. So we contribute. So we've got uh, financial accounts. There we go. Uh, and you can see here that we set up a VAT liability account. Lucky I found that. And at the bottom here, I've said enabled, yes, of course, is tax. I've ticked that button, which is to say this one's the tax account. Uh, and I've said the tax rate as well. So we're putting in the 20%. So that's kind of like your first step that you need to kind of set up. So we put that one in. Uh, back to the slides. Office for Mac. So the second step is that we need to attach this other extra account now to our financial type. So you need to kind of say, right, this financial type that I'm going to choose from the drop-down list in the contribution, we're going to say this one uh, is going to be subject to a sales tax. So in this example, I think Achiever Award Sponsors or whatever it is, the income there, that one's going to have sales tax on it. So we've kind of put that linkages in there. Um, and so you go in, boom. A minister, clearly contribute, and we've got uh, financial types, financial types. And here you can see we've got a big long list of our financial types, so I'm hoping this one is it. And you say the accounts that it's attached to, and if this is attached, yeah, so you can see that we've got the sales tax account is this liability account. So we've kind of told Civi, right, this particular financial type, we're going to charge VAT on it, and that's the percentage rate, and that's the, the creditor that I want it to go to. Yeah? Everybody okay with that? Cool, lots of nodding, good. Um, bum, bum, bum. Last but not least. So the last bit then is that you can do some actual configuration of, uh, of Civi Contribute as well. Uh, so if I just have a look at this, uh, yeah, I'll show you it on the system as well. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, so we've got administer, CV contribute, and we've got uh, CV contribute. So we've got the new component settings. So this is all the, the new stuff here. So we'll talk about the invoicing stuff in a little bit. Uh, but what you can see here is that you've got a tax term here so that we didn't want to lock it down to be VAT. But you know, we're kind of saying that this is going to, for the UK, we're putting that in as VAT. Uh, and then we've got these tax display settings. So you can kind of tweak that as well to kind of say how you want it to appear on external forms. And then what you end up with is that when you uh, set up, uh, let's say, an event, so if I go and find us an event, and let's say this event, da, 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 here's one I semi-prepared earlier, uh, yeah, fees. And I've said financial type is main income, and this main income will have VAT attached to it. Um, if I then have the event link, and I go to, let's do the registration page, the one that I tried earlier and embarrassed myself with. You will see here that now we're showing uh, ticket, which is 36. Uh, members ticket includes VAT of six pounds. So it's added on that VAT based on the rule that we had put in before. And like I said, you can change the display of this. So if we go in the other end, choose a different display, we can have it all just show 36 on its own or show 30 plus six or something like that. So you can have a little tweak around with that kind of stuff. 
Um, so I'm going to try, let's just try and purchase something. We'll see how this goes. Um, so I want to do uh, dummy payment cards, maybe. Because this went really well earlier. Mm. Uh, this is the test event. So I'm registering. It's probably there. Three for five. Da, da, da. Is it Stripe on this one? Do you? Yeah. Four two four two f like that. Yeah. Okay. Too many. <laughs> How many is it supposed to be? <laughs> Sixty. Oh wow! Everybody knows that. Uh, you didn't realise this session was going to be so painful, did you? Uh, city, country, story, yeah, USA, whatever. No, it's working now. That, yeah, have I done anything wrong? Yeah, maybe. Put that in. Please. Uh, yeah, I think it's the same. Cool. So now, if we go to our accounting batch, new batch, we can see. You Pardon? You Have I not paid? Really? Did I not complete it? Oh, <laughs> continue. Right. Got you. Thanks, guys. Uh, trying to rush through. I was just trying to call the Stripe dummy payment processor. Oh, oh. yes, excellent. Uh, so if I find, firstly, it's me, isn't it, John 1? OK, so if I just find John 1, John 1, good. So a couple of little points here you can see on the transaction. If we go and view this, you can now see that we've got the total amount and then we've got this tax amount here as well and actually rather than going to like a more detailed if you've got price sets that you're using price sets for civi uh, then you can have separate financial types attached to each price set you can have different VAT rates on the different parts of the price set so sometimes VAT is 5% sometimes it's 20% so you set up another VAT liability account that's slightly that's separate to cover the 5% rate <coughs> and then all of it goes into there as well um, so that then it would show the kind of the different breakdown for all the different line items. Cool. Uh, so that's all working. So then if we wanted to export that stuff, uh, just to show the full process, new batch, save. Bum, bum, bum. So we've got our transaction there. I'm assigning it to a batch. Cool. Uh, I'm going to uh, close and export the batch. Export to CSV. So desktop. Cool. And if everything's gone right, you can see now we've got two transactions. Um, so the way that this kind of works is that rather than having, uh, you saw that we uh, have a receivable for 120. If you looked, if you remember the accounting kind of codes. Uh, accounting transactions. What we do instead is we say we have two transactions, one of 100 and one of 20. So we have the 100 coming in and the 100 revenue, and we have 20 VAT creditor and 20 uh, coming in that we uh, are expecting as well. So it kind of splits it up into two, but it adds up to the same thing. And so you can see this kind of information here. Cool, with all the VAT, so it's working. So that's piece number one, so sales tax support. And then piece number two, again, completely an optional thing if you want to switch it on, which is invoicing. So because we've done all this stuff now around VAT, we can actually send out VAT legal invoices or VAT legal receipts, actually, is what you call them if they're after the payment's been made. Um, so what does this do? Uh, the invoicing feature, so Civi will create a legal VAT invoice for all contributions. Um, you can have them automatically email to people when they purchase online. Um, Admin can download them from the admin uh, interface. Uh, admin can email them to people. Uh, and if you do either of those, then it records an activity that that was done. Uh, or you can do both of those in bulk. So sometimes it might be that you want to send out a bulk or download you know, 100 invoices or something like that, because you've got to get the evidence out or something like that. So you can do it all as a nice search action as well. Um, 
And probably the coolest bit is that contacts can download invoices from the contact dashboard as well. So out the box, um, you'll be able to give people the ability to download that stuff. So if I just do this. So this transaction that we did, uh, where is it? Bum, bum, bum. Uh, my guy, John Doe. Rock and roll, transactions, view. So here you'll see a new button, which is print invoice or email invoice. If I just whack print invoice there, hit the desktop, save, excellent. And we've got uh, a tax invoice that's come out here. Um, these were based on, uh, I'll come back to zero. Um, these are based on zero's uh, invoices, so they're kind of structured in that way. Um, so we're quite happy that they're kind of all, all tax legal. Um, the things that you do need to know is that you need to make sure that you've got kind of like your VAT number on it, possibly your company number as well, um, so that they're kind of VAT legal. And what you can see here is that um, this contribution, because it was completed, it says less amount paid, 36, and amount due is zero. So this is actually a VAT receipt so that somebody could take and say, yeah, we paid this. Uh, alternatively, if it, the contribution was pending, so remembering that status field is really important, it will pump this out with uh, the amount owing as be amount due as being kind of the full amount of the invoice there. So that's out. Yeah? First of all, great. That's, that's great. Um, and secondly, my, most of my clients wouldn't want a, an invoice number. Okay, uh, I think it, it does have an invoice number, so there it is, yeah, invoice 144. Where's this number from? So the number relates to the contribution ID. So uh, going back to the, uh, bum, bum, bum. the settings here. So um, the, in terms of accounting in CIVI, uh, you should make sure that you're not actually deleting any contributions because they are uh, records of payment. So if you're voiding one, you do need to kind of cancel it. And in the settings, uh, I'm not sure if it's on by default, uh, and this was kind of a decision, you know, give people the flexibility, but really you wouldn't want to give your users the ability to delete any contributions. So even test contributions, which are kind of hidden away in CIVI, um, they kind of get an ID number, but they're, you know, hidden away. So, because you need to make sure that your invoicing is sequential. So you need to make sure they've got sequential numbering. Um, so uh, what you can do though, is that you can set uh, the invoice, the prefix for the invoice, and actually the credit note, I'll come to that in a second. So you set the prefix, and then it takes the invoice ID. So it makes sure that it's kind of unique to the contribution ID. Um, so uh, there was some discussion about whether or not this should be done in a different way, but we came to the conclusion that actually this enforces kind of sequential numbering. So. Um, and there's some other settings that you can kind of set here. I've gone a little bit off piece with the slides, but so there's other settings like while we're on this page for the invoices, you can set the credit note prefix, um, the due date that just comes out at the bottom, and then any notes or standard terms. So you can kind of enter in, yeah, you need to pay this right now, or these are our BAX details, whatever it may be, and put that at the bottom. Uh, and a setting here for whether or not you want the invoice to uh, automatically be emailed out to people when they uh, when they purchase stuff. So it might be that you guys actually don't want to do that. You want them to come in and download it um, rather than it getting going out because it might put a bit of stress on your email server if you're doing big, big numbers there. Um, so uh, just another thing. So um, in terms of this, Civi can technically sit next to your accounting system in, and have its own prefix and sequential numbering. So one of the requirements for VAT is that you, know, you kind of prove to the tax man that, hey, actually, we didn't invoice some people for some other stuff. Uh, which had some VAT on it that we're just hiding away from them. So in order to do that, if you show that your numbering is sequential, even if they're separate and sequential, then you're kind of compliant. So you can do other invoicing out your accounting system for other stuff and use Civi for the stuff that Civi does and have it all compliant next, next to each other. So, um, so that's that. And then let's see the contact dashboard, because uh, that's always so my contact dashboard. <coughs> oh, I don't know if it works on this one, does it? It doesn't work on probably the download bit. But yeah, okay, so you've got kind of the contact dashboard here and you're able to print the invoice. Might work. Might work. Looks like it's working, it's doing something. 
Cool. So this could be part of, yeah, that's good. Um, so could be part of, say, a member's portal or something like that. All you need to use is the out-the-box Civi uh, contact dashboard, and then people can download their invoices. So hopefully you can cut out a whole load of admin from sending off to your finance department and asking them to print off some invoices. Somebody's got to chase it. And it moves over the process of kind of actually looking after the relationship with the clients, which might be chasing the money as well, uh, to kind of the team that has all the information about them, which is the team that will be in the CRM as well. So there's that stuff. Cool. Uh, so uh, have I, where am I up to? Ah, so I don't have any slides on it, but the last thing that I just wanted to talk about is to mention that there is an extension. So looking at things in this continuum kind of way about where you want to split things up, you might not want to put the invoicing in Civi, and that's absolutely fine, and that's a perfectly valid, um, perfectly valid approach. Um, if you do want to put the invoicing in the accounting system, um, there is an integration out there for Xero, uh, which is an online accounting system. We use it. I know a lot of other small and medium-sized organizations use it as well, and it's pretty good. It's got a good API. Um, so it's worth checking out that Civi integration there. So what you can do is the contribution. Pardon? Civi and Drawful. Uh, Sorry, I don't know. It's only for Drupal, did you say? Is it only for Drupal? No, it's the extension, yeah. Yeah, the Eileen's one. Okay, that's a good point. Okay, sorry, I wasn't aware. Yeah. I think uh, it might have started as a Drupal module, but it's now an extension. I think now it's an extension, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's platform independent now. So, yeah, so it, it's fine. And it's um, what I would say is, though, have a good play with it, which is that, you know, depending on kind of how complex your processes get, it might be that you need to kind of have a, a little look at how that's all syncing across and how you want it to work. And it creates the invoice for you in Xero. So um, one option, if you don't want to have this stuff in Civi, you want to keep it in the accounts package, um, is that, yeah, you can integrate it with, say, Xero in that way, electronically, um, the, the extensions out there. Um, and it will create a contact you know, from the transaction. If it's a new contact, it will create the invoice in Xero. It will put the line items on that invoice. Uh, and I think it, you know whether it's paid or not paid, it kind of puts all of that kind of stuff in and brings it across. Um, the downside is that that invoice is now in your accounting system, and if you want somebody to be able to print it off themselves, uh, you then need to give it to them in some way. Uh, whereas you know the Civi approach means that there's more self-service and you can offload more of that to them. Um, so it's just kind of thinking about where you want the functionality to kind of sit. Okay. Really? Okay, that's good. Cool. Uh, yeah? The, on the back end contact screen. Yeah? Did you have, add another, you just went so fast, so did you, did you add another tab for transaction? Uh, no, sorry, sorry, that's just some renaming that we did because the client wanted it to be called transactions instead. That's just con contributions, so yeah, we just renamed it. And then um, it will always, if it's attached to the contribution, it will just basically be able, you'll be able to print the status de jour. So you won't be able to print the invoice that was unpaid if it's already been paid. Yeah, it's just it, the status that it has. Um, so, sorry, one of the things that I didn't show is that if you refund a contribution, so you can refund a contribution, then it updates the invoice and shows it as uh, with also a credit note and also the amount that's been refunded. So it wraps the two around. Uh, I can just show you that. So here, if I do uh, edit, can I do edit? So refunded. Um, do I have to put the date in? No, I think that should be okay. So save. So if I now go and view it, so you can see it's refunded there. Uh, you can see that I can print the invoice and the credit note now. kind of come out there something strange has gone on with something else with the dollars and things like that but anyway um, so there you can see that it's come out and then you also have the uh, credit note there at the bottom so cool any more questions on that yeah no yeah no? yeah uh, <laughs> just thinking about so, it uh, 
Uh, well, so it does work with web forms. Uh, however, we need to get a pull request pushed into web form at the moment. So we're kind of waiting for that. So at the moment, this stuff isn't all finished. It still needs quite a lot of QA. We're still deciding kind of which version of Civi it's all going to fit into uh, and getting it all kind of like signed off and ticked and bashed. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a little bit in progress. However, it's not a, a far point to push it into web form. So we've kind of done that already. Uh, yeah, so, so web, forms will, web forms will just allow you, so if you uh, put in a price, I'm trying to remember how it works, you can remember how it works, the price, does it just add VAT onto it, that one, or you just set to, to add VAT? Correct, uh, financial type, and the VAT will just go into it. Yeah, so you set the financial type and then it'll pull, if it's got VAT, it will update the amount or the cost of that particular item with VAT, if it needs to be on there. Uh, probably got that to show somewhere, haven't we? Oh, we have to go through the worst, longest form <laughs> in the world to get to it. Uh, can we do this? No, don't do that. So here, if we do at uh, dot com, uh, not having luck with forms today. So instead. Uh, How did we hear about it? Yeah, oh, no, great. Uh, just um, sure this is really enthralling for people watching. Uh, job title, tick some stuff. Yeah, so there you can see kind of like it comes up with the amount, you know, plus the VAT kind of included and pulls that across. So yeah. that was worth it, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 you all knew what was coming there. Uh, there is your proof. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Cool. Yeah. Uh, multi currency support? Uh, so Civi's multi currency support, we've not actually done a huge amount with multi currency stuff. Uh, Civi's multi currency support basically kind of treats a payment as a number with a currency attached to it. So, um, you know, if, if you're doing something in dollars, you can put a different, you know, rate against that and you could link it to a different financial type. So, you know, it, it's kind of up to you. So what about things like adjustments, you know, currency? So it doesn't, Civi doesn't really deal with very much in that, in that sense for multiple currencies, like exchange rates and then coming back and adjusting for those kind of things. The accounting, accounting stuff doesn't get up to that level at this point. Pardon? I've heard for Bitcoin, yes, so <laughs> apparently, yes. <laughs> Can you raise invoices from different companies? For example, if we have 18 companies, and invoices can come out of any of them. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it, um, it depends kind of how you want to set it up. So um, I think the simple answer to that is no until, fur <laughs> until further notice. Uh, but I'm just trying to think like how, what, what you kind of want to, an event can come out of any organisation. Um, but they'd all want to be on the same civvy, basically. So you'd want to kind of... Yeah, rather than running one one civvy, because a client can go to events for different entities. Yeah, so short of uh, doing something quite bespoke around the invoices and kind of saying, well, this invoice is for this one or whatever it may be. No, I'm not out the box. I can't really think about it. Um, I mean, somebody asked a similar question about kind of like uh, message templates and whether or not you can kind of tokenize them for different purposes so you might be able to do like some stuff with like some if statements and things like that so that so sorry one of the points is that uh, the invoice itself is just a message template so people who are familiar to Civi will see under message templates we've got system workflow we've got contribution invoice and you can edit this and this is kind of all like smarty stuff um, so you can kind of put in your tokens and bits and bobs in there if you want to edit it or change the invoice or the look and feel of it and stuff like that Not at the moment, no. So you would have to do something specific in order to do that. Yeah. Different contribution page. Uh, no, they're kind of. It's one invoice for the organisation at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. If if you had if you had this system, would you be still processing contributions in Civi? Uh, or would you expect your account system to be processing contributions? 
When you say processing, what, what exactly? Well, uh, reconciling, because the last talk was from uh, Bjorn. Okay, about the bank. About city yes. Yes. We haven't looked at it in the context of city banking. So, um, what you kind of got going on here is like a decision about where you want certain functionality to, to be. Um, and, you know, kind of at some point you probably want to do a rec against what's in Civi, against what's in your bank account, perhaps. And also, the, the trouble is trying to keep all of these three systems, you know, like in, in sync, basically. So they're all kind of telling the same story. Um, so if you wanted to use Civi banking, there's nothing here that's kind of changing the way that Civi works in terms of well, we still have contributions here, and we still want to know what's in the bank account and make sure that they match up. So that doesn't really change any of that kind of stuff. Um, so, um, so yeah. So, does that answer your question? Right. Yeah, it should be all right. Hopefully, it should be all right. Apart from um, <coughs> if you use CV banking, it's not structured at the moment to <coughs> trigger the email to the client back. Okay. So if you set it up that once the transaction is complete, to um, email. Uh, receipt now, whatever you prefer. <coughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, another question? Yep. Yeah. Good. So, <coughs> so this realm all sort of speculative. <coughs> oh, I love speculative. Lovely kind of question. So, so we're talking about a continuum of, of things, <coughs> and we're seeing a bunch of stuff coming into Civi now with, with banking stuff, this, and things you've been mm. talking about. So in that sense, Civi Will there be a Civi bank, is the question. No. Well, so, so Civi is sort of progressing sort of towards the, the accounting end of things. Um, is there a sense as to, you know, quite how far that might go or where it should go? And, um, you know, do we see that Civi might one day be a sort of full-fledged accounting system? Or if not, you know, do we, is there any sort of... Mm. I, 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 well, I'm... I'm definitely not the the person to ask is the first thing, um, but I think there's a because you know I, I don't have that direction over the, the project, so that's up, up to the core team. Um, we had a specific client need that was that they wanted to support VAT and invoicing. <coughs> oh, I need a bit of water. But um, yeah, so uh, and so we we went and built that, and we thought if we can build it in a way that everybody can benefit it from it, then great, then we'll put it out there. Um, I think generally, you know. Accounts packages are probably going to be better at accounting stuff than Civi is. <coughs> but what we want to do is we want to make Civi as good at t interfacing to them as we can so that it's kind of as seamless for people using Civi. And it makes life as you know, zero admin as possible. Um, so that's kind of more the direction, which is how do we make this interfacing between the two of them easier. You know, and one of these points was around kind of, well, if Civi just deals with the invoicing stuff, then great, then it's over in there, and that's made life a bit easier. You know, is Civi going to start looking after your assets, your other assets? So let's say you dispose of a car in the business or whatever it means, and you put in those accounting entries. It's probably not going to be doing that. It's not really going to be good at doing that compared to really developed account packages. Packages. Dave, do you have anything to add to that? Because maybe that's another. You have your I'm views. I, I'd be absolutely along. <coughs> I mean, this is a really, you know, mm. great step forward and it makes, it makes a lot of life easier to, you know, get your stuff in and out of the county and, uh, you know, doing things and so on. And, and allowing, like I say, allowing the right people maybe to take up uh, payments and stuff, mm. you know, even better. Mm. Well, city's not the county. And sending the right thing to the client, that's a major thing for something yeah. not being able to send a corporate invoice. Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, so water, great. Is there any more questions? Because otherwise I can... Okay, cool. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank you very much for coming to SiviCon.